unboxing video of the brand new genuine, uh, don't call it genuine scooter company now, it's genuine motorcycles, as you can see on the side. It's their genuine 400C. Uh, I could say that it's been a long time waiting for these things, a long time coming, and that would be the understatement of the uh, scooter. I think we've been waiting for this bike for about three years. So let's see exactly what we're into here. Okay, uh, nice steel crate on the inside. Uh, yeah, every time you see a small box, you always get nervous because when you see a small box, that usually means the bike is extremely disassembled. And that seems to be the case here. Uh, looks like we've got the rear wheel on and the front wheel up front. Boy, this looks an awful lot like the way the Royal Enfield used to create their bikes. All right, so we've got the vast majority of the bubble wrap off the bike. And if you guys want to scroll in here, come in a little bit. I'll show you some different things that are kind of neat. They really did go to a lot of trouble packaging it. Uh, you're going to notice that the wheel uh, and the tire is already assembled. It's packed, it's held into the side of the crate there very nicely. Uh, what I think is interesting is you'll notice down here, they've actually taken the shock absorber, uh, the shock absorber out of the shock absorber eye mount. So your uh, shock absorber stanchion bolt is out so they can get the bike lower. They really have done a mastery of getting this thing into as small a crate volume as humanly possible. This thing is really, really packed in here. So I was also happy to see there's no damage on the bike. So if you look in here, uh, it really looks nice. This is that metallic green and silver paint scheme. It really does look sharp. Uh, it's actually nicer than I had anticipated. So I'm very happy about that. Uh, really looks good. I mean, overall, pretty excited to get to the next stage of unpacking. Uh, this appears, I don't even think this is damaged. I think this piece being bent here is intentional. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised to find this piece of metal bent on every single one that we uncrate. Um, sort of intelligent design here to be able to keep that square. But a lot of times we'll see bikes damaged because other crates being stacked on top of them. That does not seem to be the case in this bike. So pretty darn good. I'm happy to see that it still has a kickstart. That's pretty cool. And it is securely fastened into the bike here. If you look down at that uh, double piston brake caliper, they do have a nice uh, wedge jammed in there to make sure that the brakes don't energize in transit. So it makes it harder to put the wheel on. Uh, pretty good. So the next, uh, our next phase we're gonna get into, we'll actually be getting it out of the metal crate itself. And we'll get the bike out of the metal crate and get a jack under it, get it lifted up in the air so that we can go ahead and get that front wheel mounted, get the shocks up to where they're supposed to be. It'll be a lot easier to move around for the final preparations. All right, we'll catch you in part three. Okay, here we are. This is part three to our unboxing video of the genuine 400C. Uh, you're gonna take a look. We have removed the metal framework off the crate at this point. There were about 24 M6 bolts our framework is over there, that's our waste pile. There, uh, you will need a 10 millimeter impact driver uh, if you wanna make things move along a little quicker. Uh, only about two or three of them were cross-threaded, which is unusual, normally there's more than that on these type of crates. Uh, you're gonna see that we have not jacked up the suspension yet, we have not put the front wheel on it. I just wanted to call attention to a couple of things that we got to this point. The first thing I wanna call attention to is right here, this bolt right there. Uh, that was used as a frame support for that crate. There is another one like it on the other side. When you take the crate apart, you're gonna wanna make sure to take that support arm off and replace the bolt back into the frame of the motorcycle. It is not a bolt that matches all the other zinc uh, shiny bolts. It is a black uh, powder coated bolt and it goes back in the frame so that uh, it's actually part of the load bearing unit. So you wanna be aware of that once you can put some Loctite on it when you do your final prep on the motorcycle. What I'm gonna call your attention to now is you'll notice our rear suspension is still in the closed position. We still have the bike low. What we're gonna do in the next segment, I'm gonna go ahead and get the bike up on its two wheels. I'm gonna get it up off of this crate base, and then we're gonna talk about some of the stuff there. If you wanna bring the camera over here, I'd like to show you what we got lined up for you. So you'll see these are the items that come in the kit or in the crate with the motorcycle. They're wrapped up in bubble wrap. I've taken them out to show them to you today. So you're gonna find the metal side panels. These are actual steel, that's really nice. The front fender is actual chrome plated steel and it's very nicely done. Uh, the chrome plating on this is very nice. Uh, same with the chain guard is chrome. The mirrors are good DOT marked mirrors so you won't have any problems with legality. 
Our foot pegs are very nice. The foot pegs are spring-loaded, folding driver's foot pegs. Uh, the battery is a uh, seal battery, AGM battery. So we're assuming that this is gonna come with a full state of readiness, but we're gonna put it on the battery tender, uh, put a base charge on it just to be sure. You're gonna notice that the handlebars in the bike were still in the down position. It does come with the two tops for the handlebar clamps that are right here, along with the extra hardware you'll need to mount the front fender and the chain guard. Uh, extra hardware is in here as well. And we have the two keys from Genuine in here as well. Uh, here's the factory toolkit for the motorcycle. So these are all the items that will be in the accessories box when you take the bike out of the crate. Now we've got everything laid out. We've done an inventory to make sure all the parts that we need are here. Now we can commence with taking the bike off the pallet and getting the bike into a warmer environment because this 25 degrees out here is no fun for uncrating. All right, so it's been a few hours since we last uh, checked in. So this is our fourth part of our little video for you today. The rest of the prep on the bike went pretty normal. In fact, I was really happy to find that the fasteners all lined up. Nothing was cross-threaded. Uh, there's a lot of other Asian and uh, Indian import bikes that we've worked with that we can't say the same thing for. Uh, we'll go ahead and do its test fire. We put about a gallon of gas in it. We charged the battery on the Optimate for a couple hours. And uh, it's a fuel-injected bike, so it should fire right up. Hey, there we go, perfect. Uh, take a little walk around, you can check out the noise it makes. If you wanna come over here and check out the exhaust. Now we don't have the right side panel on the bike because we're just gonna check it. We're gonna run it for two to three minutes, as the manual says, and then we're gonna check the oil. And then we'll do another little update from inside the shop once we get everything put back together. We're gonna let it run for a couple, three minutes. We're going to go through and make sure the turn signals work. Excellent. High beam, low beam, brake light. Excellent. Let's check the rear brake. Yep, rear brake's good to go. Yeah, so overall, very impressed. The bike went together very, very well. A uh, couple little things like the US DOT turn signals are a little bit strange. You can see where they had to make some adjustments for those. But overall, I'm very happy. As with all Chinese bikes, we say we maintain a sort of cautious optimism. We hope everything works out great, but we're going to keep you posted if we find anything that's not perfect. We'll see you inside in a few minutes once we do the first oil check and make sure everything's good to go with that. Okay, and this is our last segment on the Genuine 400C, uh, the motorcycle that's now imported to the United States by Genuine Scooter Company out of Chicago, Illinois. We've Today, we've taken the bike from its crated form all the way to its running. Uh, we haven't put the mirrors on it yet. There's some things we're gonna do for final prep, but we've taken the bike outside. We've started it. We've checked the oil as you're supposed to after the motor runs because it is a dry sump motor. And a couple things we wanted to call your attention to that are really kind of cool about this bike. So the first thing is this. Uh, the owner's manual is simply put the best owner's manual I have read for a non-US built bike in a long time. Uh, unlike some of the other companies that have the owner's manual printed in three or four languages and it's you know telephone book thick and not very comprehensive this is only printed in English and it has important things in there like it says that the gas you're supposed to use in this motorcycle is 87 octane we don't need to convert anything from RON or MON or RM2 it specifically is written for the United States market and I really like that about this owner's manual it also tells you things in here that aren't normally in today's like um, no serviceable parts inside kind of owner's manuals. So this owner's manual tells you how to check your timing if you should need to. It also tells you a lot of good information about the correct way to do an oil change. Uh, those things are not commonly found in most modern motorcycle owner's manuals. So we're really happy to see that in this owner's manual today. It's written in uh, very good American English. So somebody took a lot of time translating this and more importantly using the kind of language that the owner of the motorcycle would be familiar with. We're gonna have some fire department go by here in just a second, I'm sure. Uh, it has, happens here at this location. And we got fire trucks coming one direction and we got ambulances going the other direction. So it's gonna be kind of loud for a second. And uh, about the bike itself. So some of the things that are important is it's really, according to the specs, we're looking at about 24 horsepower. So that's really nice, 400 cc's. It's very lightweight, about 359 pounds. So I was very impressed with the lightness of it. And also considering that it is a real metal gas tank, real metal side panels, real metal fenders. 
So they don't get their lightweight by just having everything on the bike plastic. The chain guard is even steel, a chrome plated steel. The fender's steel. That's really nice. Uh, the fit and finish of everything, putting the bike together, building it, I can tell you that I'm very, very happy with the way the bike went together. You notice down there uh, in the camera shot, the aluminum, the alloy wheels are very nice. Uh, it's a well put together machine. The fasteners, the grade eight fasteners that we saw on there, I believe they actually are grade eight. I don't think they're like some of the Indian bikes we've seen where it has a grade eight stamp on it, but it clearly is made out of Velveeta. Uh, things like the controls are very nice and the kind of controls you'd expect to find on modern day motorcycles. The switch gear is very firm and positive. It isn't built cheaply. So it's not, um, you know, a lot of people will say, with China, you get what you order, you get what you pay for. And I really do feel like with this bike, uh, somebody chose to have higher quality components than we see on a lot of the other Chinese bikes. It is fuel injected, so that's really nice. Uh, it does hold a lot of oil. You talk about that uh, dry sump oil pump. It's got uh, over three quarts of oil in it in the system. So this bike really does benefit from having a lot of oil. It's going to run cool. It's going to run clean. Uh, like the venerable Honda 400cc motor that you probably recognize from a lot of different motorcycles, including the GB500 we have in the window. Um, oil filters right here. Um, it really, and it's got a Kickstarter, a functional Kickstarter. That's kind of cool. You don't see that on too many motorcycles today. Uh, pretty neat. You are going to notice it has the twin exhaust. It has the stainless steel exhaust, uh, one muffler or one silencer on each side. That's because this is a Tool, uh, dual exhaust valve motor, so you're going to have an exhaust valve on the left and an exhaust valve on the right. Uh, stainless steel pipes the whole way down, which is really cool too. Uh, very, very nice. I gotta say, uh, it's impressing me. I'm, as opposed to some of the other Chinese products that we've looked at, uh, some of the other Chinese motorcycles we've had our hands on here at the shop, uh, this one is, at least at first blush, really nice. I'm, I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed with the machine overall. The basics, the ergonomics, I'm going to go ahead and throw a leg over it real quick so you can kind of see what it looks like when you've got a six foot tall, 210 pound person on here to see size wise what we're talking about. So this bike does feel very comfortable to me. I do not feel crowded on here. It's not like I'm sitting on a Kimco Spade or a Honda Grom. Everything is natural. The, the position works very, very well for me. And we've had some other people that are shorter than me sit on it and they say it feels really nice too. Um, nice big gas tank, it's over three gallons. So I'm kind of expecting a lot from this bike. I hope that I don't regret saying that down the road, but we are gonna maintain our cautiously optimistic attitude about it. And if there's anything that we find that's a shortcoming or a drawback in the bike, we're gonna make sure to let you guys know. But today on assembly uh, and PDI of the bike, we're so far, we're very impressed. Uh, we will keep you posted as things go. For more information, contact us. We're at Cleveland Moto. You can go to our website at www.clevelandmoto.com. You can call the shop at 216-795-5580. Thanks and have a great day.